everyone. Welcome to My Style Crafts. Today we're going to be painting a model. I'm using a big one so that everyone can see the details. And I'm going to be teaching my simple techniques that I'm guaranteed that anybody can do. It starts with assembly if needed, primer, base coat, wash, highlights, and then if so desired, a top coat varnish. Uh, you're going to need uh, paint brushes, acrylic paints, a model, and water and then a paper towel so that you can get the water off of your paintbrush. If you would like to join me, go ahead and grab your supplies and let's get started. After assembling it all, this is what it looks like so far, and now it's time to prime. You want to make sure that you shake your can up pretty good, and a few feet away, we're going to do nice, thin coats. You want to make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area, it's just like any other spray paint, it has aerosol and such, and you want to make sure that you're not inhaling anything. Nice thin coats. All over. You can do a couple coats if necessary. Make sure you get the base. I'll be painting those separately. It's just a little easier for me, it's what I tend to like to do. I was going to do the model separately as well, but it didn't want to hold together to prime very well, so I compromised and just put the model together. Make sure you get them from all angles. I know it's kind of hard to tell since it was a white model and this is white primer, but you want to make sure it's a nice coating. And now, you just let it dry. I'll end up taking it inside, so that one, no one takes it, but also two, to make sure that no debris, no bugs, or anything gets stuck on it. Alright, here's the model after it's all been primed and put together. I'll show you a little bit of each step of some of the painting on here and then after I get everything done and assembled I will show you the final product. Uh, over here I have my basing colors that I have planned out. I have ash gray, fur brown, abomination gore, and skeleton bone. I'll be using this for the teeth, this for like the horns and the, the bony protrusions on him. This is going to be his main color, and this is going to be his underbelly color. Uh, don't worry if your base coat makes it look ugly, it's the shading and the highlighting that definitely pop makes everything pop. So let's get started. I'm going to be taking one of my big brushes, since this is a fairly large model. And you don't need to be too neat with the base coat. In fact, it goes faster if you're not. Just go ahead and kind of slap it on. Get into every nook and cranny you can. And as you can tell, some of this paint is getting on my protrusions and I'm not caring. all those nooks. The nice thing about acrylic paint is as soon as it's layered you can go over with another color. Yes, it does seem to affect the shade a bit, but I, in my personal experience, haven't found it to make a huge difference unless it's an extremely dark 
color. And then it would just take a lot more layers. And just so you know, the more layers you put on, the more detail you lose. But it does take quite a few layers to make that happen. And on such a big model like this, it would take quite a bit to lose a lot of these details. I will insert some pictures along the way, just so you can see my progress. But next, I, when I come on the camera, I'll be showing you how to do some of the quick shading. All right, here's the base painted model. As you can tell, it's not clean by any stretch of the imagination, but we can do cleanup when we go to do the highlights. So now what we're going to do is what's called quick shade. It's these bottles here. They're super liquidy. We have red, soft, strong, and dark. What they do is they collect in the crevices of the models right where the natural shading would be. So I like to take my super fuzzy brushes. I'm going to start with the red. And go in. Don't be afraid to be liberal. So it's going to just slightly change the actual tone of the paint job. And the heavier you go, the darker those crevices will be. So I'll do red all over there. I'm going to do the dark tone up on the bony protrusions. I'm going to do the soft tone on the teeth. And the strong tone, kind of wherever it fits, probably on the belly, the talons. It's kind of how I feel in the moment. So nice and strong. Don't be afraid to use a heavy hand because then you can come back with a cleaner brush. You can always move it around. And then you can come back with more if you need. Just like before, I'll come back with some pictures, but I'll see you with the highlights. Alright, now we are on to the highlighting stage. So with the highlighting stage, I take some of my brushes that are super frayed out, and I like to keep them that way makes for really good dry brushing. This is my favorite one. So after I do the quick shade, I tend to like to go into the same color. You take a little bit just on the tip of the brush. And then you take most of it off. And you can go back in and highlight it back up just a little bit. You won't see a whole lot of difference, but it'll bring back some of that original color, especially if you really liked it. And then, depending on the colors, I will either mix the old color with a slightly brighter color, or I'll just use the brighter color. In this case, I don't want to make this monster super bright, so what I'm going to try is to mix 
these two colors and see what I get. You'll get quite a bit on the brush doing it this way, but then you can roll off some of it because you don't have to be afraid of ruining it because it's your dry brushing brush. And you get some highlighting. And it's not quite doing it for me, so I'm going to try the bright color. Yeah, with that dark background, it doesn't come out too bright, so it's actually working out pretty good. But, from what I can see, you can't see a whole lot of that on camera. So I'll rinse that off. You're going to want to make sure that the brush is as dry as you can get it. So I swirl it around, scrub it. Bump the camera there a little bit, sorry about that. I'm going to go to the belly. So I'm going to use this color right here. This is my skeleton bone. I'm going to use this to dry brush the underbelly. And let's see how this turns out. Oops, still a little bit too much of my brush. So I scrub it off. And highlight it up a little bit. See if I can get in here a little bit better. So I take a little bit on my brush, dab it off. And just like that. I'm gonna, now I'm going to come in a little bit closer. And you can see that there's a little bit of spill over from when I was doing the spikes. But with the dry brush, you can clean that up a little bit too. Just gonna knock it back. Now, I like to do two different highlights, really. Here's all my paints. To go up against skeleton bone, I like to highlight with mummy robes. So you always want to make sure to mix up your paints again. Don't need a whole lot for dry brushing. And now I'm not going to be worried about rinsing my brush because it's going to the same place. And if it mixes up, then that's just fine. And I'll come back and bring it up just a little bit more. Bring out a little more highlighting. Ooh. Don't be afraid to really scrub if you've gotten a lot of the paint off of the brush. If you still have a lot of paint on there, just have a nice light hand. There's the highlight. And if it's splotchy, that's okay. Especially if it's a monster, it means they're kind of dirty. And that works just fine, especially for an underbelly.
All right. I will come back after I've done all of the highlighting and show you what I've got. All right, just wanted to hop back in and show you guys something real quick. I was super messy with some of these protrusions over here on the tail. But actually, I can use that to my advantage. So I'll do some of my dry brushing. And I kind of take it up onto these protrusions a little bit. And it softens that entire line. And see here, I kind of went a little too far with my highlight. I can just take my finger, take some of that paint off. And now I've knocked back the transition between regular scales and those protrusions. Now it's time to do details. There's not a whole lot of details that didn't get touched on already, but we do have the eyes left. Just kind of want to shade it in. I don't want it super, super black, so I'm just kind of glazing it with the black to kind of make a gray. And there we go. Alright, I'm going to give a time lapse of me painting the base. I'll get it all assembled, and then I'll be back with spray painting on the vinet, the finished varnish, and then I'll show you this in better light at all angles. Here I am outside again. You can see he's all finished, all painted. Now I'm going to varnish him. I like the anti shine just so it kind of makes it a little more real. You do it just like you do the primer. Nice, even, thin coat all around. All right, and that's it. Here's some pictures just to show you the finished product. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. It's my first major one and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. See you next time.